Hey guys, Alex Khan here, and we are going to look at this Men in Black 3 64 Ford Galaxy that came out in 2012 in time for the Men in Black 3 movie, which is my favorite Men in Black movie in the entire franchise of Men in Black. Way better than the last one they made, and in my opinion, way better than the first two that they made too. So, this uh, diecast was made by Greenlight, and this was also available in a, uh, in a chrome black color, which I thought didn't look too good. Uh, but when you look on eBay, it feels like chrome is the only color you can find this car in. So when I found that this car was uh, being sold as a black one used, I jumped at the opportunity. It was cheaper. It seemed to be in pretty good shape. Um, I did notice that the, uh, the driver's side door doesn't close all the way, but that's no big deal. It is an old car. At least uh, in the movie, it's old. So I'm going to talk about the inaccuracies later on. But yeah, this, uh, this box, it's pretty cool. Like whenever you see these Men in Black uh, die cast merchandise, they're always decked out in the, in the Men, in, Men in Black uh, uh, logos. It's got some information about the car itself on the very back. And it's actually officially licensed by, by Ford. So that's pretty cool. And if you guys do watch the movies, at least the first three, well actually at number one and three, and number two, you do see a, a Ford vehicle being used by the Men in Black agents. Uh, the exception being in Men in Black 2, where they're actually driving a Mercedes. But when you look at the, at the warehouse where all the cars are, you do see the 86 Ford uh, LTD at Crown Vic. But yeah, this car, the Ford Galaxy, it does not appear in Men in Black 3. For about, oh, I don't know, about 48, about 48 minutes. That's when a men in, or that's when Will Smith uh, jumps back in time when he goes back to the uh, to the 60s. Actually, it's 1969 to be specific. So uh, that's when you see him, uh, or that's when you see this vehicle is now the uh, the fleet vehicle of the Men in Black Agency. Um, the first 30 minutes of the movie, which is set in 2012. Uh, the the fleet vehicle is a uh, uh, four Taurus SHO, which uh, I don't like the looks of it, but that is a very powerful car, very powerful sleeper car. But let's talk more about this diecast. So, in all my mo all my my videos where I talk about these diecasts based off of uh, TV and movie cars, I always talk about the inaccuracies in those models. Now, when I look at this. 64 4 Galaxy, this die cast only has two flaws that I noticed. The first flaw being this. They don't have that little uh, emblem in the back. It's just a solid straight line of chrome. And also, I don't believe it is a vinyl top in the movie. It's hard to tell, though, uh, because when you see this car, it's usually from a far distance. And if you do see it from a close distance, it's like from this angle, and you can't really tell what the top is. But it does look kind of shiny, so it leads me to believe that the movie version is a hard top. But that's really no big deal because as I said, it's really hard to tell. Um, I guess the best ways to tell is by looking at the interior shots when they're driving. You can look at the inside of the, the roof. Uh, but I don't really know what the interior looks like of a uh, 64 Ford Galaxy's vinyl top. If I did know, I could verify if it's a vinyl or a hard top. I guess I should have done the research, huh? But everything about this die cast is very accurate to the movie. The Ford uh, the Galaxy 500 badging, the license plate, the taillights. Um, I do wish the trunk would open because in the movie, when they're at the at the baseball stadium, the trunk does open and it has all kinds of weapons inside. But yeah, uh, this car gets about four and a half minutes uh, worth of screen time in Men in Black 3. It doesn't seem like much. Actually, it's really not that much. Uh, but it is ample enough time that... If you had seen this car, you could relate this car to Men in Black 3. Maybe not as iconic as the, the 86 Ford LTD Crown Vic from the first movie, but it, it's still pretty iconic, especially for someone like me who likes Men in Black 3 the most. I want to uh, focus on this vehicle because it's, it is the best movie, in my opinion, out of the Men in Black series. So, uh, yeah, you first see this, uh, this car when... Uh, when Josh Brolin, who plays the younger version of uh, Tommy Lee Jones, when he's uh, dry, driving uh, Will Smith around, and then you see it again when they when they pull up to the factory, 
you do later see the car very briefly when they're uh, getting pie at the diner. It's a very hard shot to see, though. It's, it's in the background. And then, again, you see it when they're at the baseball stadium, especially when they're back of the car getting their, their weapons from the trunk. And then when they're running out of the stadium to uh, try to catch Boris, but that's when Boris captures uh, Griffin, uh, Boris slams his uh, motorcycle into the uh, Ford Galaxy and destroying this car. So at that point, you're like, wow, how are they going to get around? So what it, what the movie reveals is the uh, inside the undercarriage, there are two high-tech uh, unimotorcycles inside, which I think that would have been cool if they could somehow portray that in this diecast, but I don't know how you would be able to do that. Uh, but at least, you know, show the, show the trunk. That would have been cool. But in this uh, vehicle, the trunk actually doesn't open. What does open, though, are these doors. And also these uh, these seat oh, shoot these seats actually pull forward, which is a very cool extra feature to have. And then you have the uh, the, the trunk here, or sorry, the the hood, which does open up. So yeah, it it doesn't get that much screen time, but compared to the other vehicles, it gets equal screen time. It gets about as much screen time as the as the the Ford Taurus SHO, and then it also gets. As, as much screen time, actually way more screen time than the Cadillac DeVille convertible that Will Smith first drives when he gets into the 60s. He actually steals that car, and he has a little funny incident with the uh, the police. But yeah, even the, the interior seems to be accurate. It's hard to tell, though. Like It does look pretty black in the interior when uh, Josh Brolin is talking to Will Smith about where to go. So... This is one of the most accurate uh, die-cast vehicles that I own, aside from that little detail and the roof, which might be hardtop or it might be a vinyl. I don't really know. So anyhow, what do you guys think of this vehicle? What was your favorite Men in Black movie? And I think that seems to be all my questions. But yeah, it's, if you do try looking for this vehicle, it really is hard to find it in the in the the black color. Because you could you could find it in the chrome black color, but it just doesn't look right. I don't know why they make those chrome diecast, because it's so not movie accurate when they have those. I guess it's more if, if you're a collector, and uh, you just want to see that. Yeah, you, know, you just want to have more than one vehicle, so you get one in a funky color. Let me show you the uh, the undercarriage here. Shoot, sorry, my my gloves are stuck. So it says uh, 64 Ford Galaxy, 118 scale. It says 2204, so I don't know if that's a, a limited number. I don't know. Would have been cool if they had the uh, the unicycles on the bottom. But yeah, I was so sad when this uh, car vehicle, when this vehicle blew up, because it didn't do any hard driving in the movie. I, I wish it did though. But, uh, yeah, I will see you guys later.